So uh, from the very beginning, we uh, we were very very particular about one thing. We did not want to have a close view of architecture or uh, life. Uh, we only try to uh, acknowledge the fact that the world is a very diverse place. From the very beginning, we, uh, we were very, very particular about one thing. We did not want to have a close view of architecture or uh, life. Uh, every place on earth had something particular, something, and that can be celebrated. It doesn't have to be a homogenized thing. Even all these machine-made things, there is a diversity. Uh, there is a danger to, uh, we, we, we have a, we still have this thing, that there are disparities and everything in our income. But art does not need to be in that uh, condition. Architecture is part of art, doesn't it? An architecture which is created with simple material, with simple technology, can be as beautiful as something which is made with very uh, recent technological uh, development and very high-tech material. So I think there was a time, especially in countries which were colonized for a long time, uh, that uh, a disconnection took place. And there was a dependency on uh, models and everything uh, from outside the place, that everything that came from outside. Regionalism, uh, in a way, also instilled a kind of pride in the work that uh, you were doing. Not in a narrow way, but the things that you would not take seriously or not look uh, uh, second time, whether it's a small basket that has been crafted or a uh, rural vernacular hut that was not uh, uh, considered as something high art. You know? so, the, the, at that time, uh, regionalism made people look into this thing, and we took a look. We took a look into our tradition. But I, I'm not saying that that, that should. I, mean, I, I even did not uh, carry it like that. I also believe that one needs to evolve, um, and how one can engage the changing environment, changing future, uh, because it's not uh, what was relevant in the 80s. Today there are new issues. You know it very well that uh, the world does not talk about only styles mm -hmm. today. This is, uh, for me it was an amazing uh, commission, because uh, for quite a while, and what started with a, like a cultural inquiry uh, moved into things like uh, geographical or topographical in inquiry. Uh, topographical inquiry, even I'm saying that the place where one builds something is not a place that uh, I mean, we were at the time only talking about history and tradition. But what about the place, the land, the tree, the atmosphere? The, that is also very much part of the place. Uh, and architecture also needs to engage uh, to that thing. So I was looking into one particular thing about our uh, place here is that we get a lot of rain, a lot of water for about uh, four to six months of the year. It's more water than anywhere else. It's raining, it's flooding, 
It's spotted everywhere. It's uh, uh, River Island. So when I got this project, when I went and saw this site, it was underwater at that time. And, but uh, uh, the client was saying that uh, that's my land. And so where is the land? There's no land. I was, you know, that's now underwater, but that will emerge. So that created a, a kind of a, a twist in my thought process because all this time I could see the la land where I was going to build, but this is, I was not going to see the land. The land will appear. So what will you do? Uh, you'll have to create a datum or a base where uh, uh, throughout the year you will have a dry uh, condition. Uh, this is going to be a school. So why not create a flexible thing that when the water comes, the school rises and the water goes. We, we, but we, we needed to do it very simply, uh, not using very complex technology. And this was there, uh, uh, Bangladesh being a, a country with a lot of uh, rivers and canals. So I observed that we were making uh, this uh, pontoons for people uh, to get into this uh, launches and uh, uh, remote uh, ships and other things. So that was floating, and, but that was all the time in water. But I also saw that in the southern districts, where you have high tide and low tide, so during the low tide, you have the uh, pontoons on the ground. Mm -hmm. But uh, it's a wet ground, and uh, so that was one idea that okay. And there were also things which were happening so we carried out some inquiry that how simply we can uh, make a uh, school that would flow. And the other thing that I looked into was use material that was not going to increase the carbon uh, emission. And, uh, use materials which were naturally flown, except for the uh, steel drums, which is the basic flotation device. Uh, the, the whole school floats on the steel drum. We have used bamboo all along. How do you inhabit with water? How do you uh, create a balance uh, between land and water? It doesn't have to be all land. So that's so it's, a, it's a small project, but it gave me this opportunity of uh, exploring this idea of living in a deltaic uh, landscape. That is, uh, that is an important point because that's a big difference from the volume. Even in apartments you will see that we have broken volumes because we want to increase the surface contact with the outside. In a cold place, you want to decrease that, yeah. keep the heat in. But we have to increase it so that rooms get exposed to the outside. So in this project too, the concept uh, was to bring in the outside in, in between the rooms also. Because in this project we had the land and the freedom, flexibility to do that. In, in uh, other areas, the land price in Dhaka is very high. You cannot do it. Take so much luxury. Here we could do that. The idea is always that an indoor space uh, to the outdoor is not one line. It is a space, intermediate space. So that's the in-between space. We call it the in-between space. The in-between in space serves as a link from the indoor to the outdoor. The in-between space is the most interesting space to sit in. It's raining when uh, you have uh, high humidity, uh, put on the fan, sit there. It's like a veranda, but it is, you will not be able to, if you do it properly, you should not be able to say whether that's outdoors or indoors. It's somewhere in between. The only difference with Sri Lanka and our uh, climate is that they have less amount of wind with the rain. So they can uh, afford to keep their pavilions open, have permanent furniture in them. For us, we have uh, our tea bungalows all have porticos, where, uh, which is the main living space during the day. 
but they also have servants who will take over the cushions every time it rains and wipe the chairs and bring it back. So our pavilion living uh, is possible, but not with permanent kind of furniture. But it's the same thing. You need those spaces, and that spaces will keep out the sun, will allow your indoor windows to be open when it's raining, which is very important because our climate takes a cyclical uh, uh, turn in terms of temperature during the hot months. So you will have a few days of very high heat, no rain, the, uh, the uh, water is evaporating, clouds are forming, and then you will have four or five days of rain. It is during the change when you have high heat to the first rains is the most comfortable. So at that time, we, if we keep our windows open, we are losing valuable experience to uh, uh, compromise. So if you can keep your windows open, the best. And it keeps out the sun, let's say airflow. Mud walls are much better to live in than brick or metal. Metal is worse. Mud houses are cooler because mud uh, has a quality of controlling humidity. So when it's very humid, mud absorbs a lot of the humidity. And in winter, when it's dry, mud retains the moisture. So it, it gets warmer in winter and cooler in summer. But what happens is mud is associated in our country with poverty. So only poor people use the mud. The moment they get some money, they will change the wall material into first metal and then brick. Ultimately, they will go for the brick. The reason is that a uh, mud house needs a lot of regular maintenance because the water on the walls will erode the walls. The water falling, splashing onto the ground will erode the bottom part of the mud house. So in this experiment, I wanted to make, uh, try to make, to make architectural interventions so that the wall, the wall becomes maintenance free. So all the efforts were for that. So we hired a traditional mud wall builder and told him the plan that this is the, this is the way we're going to build. But I tried to insert certain things into it. I'll make, I think we have details for this. So the plan is very simple. This is a rectangular plan. One portion is two story. One portion is one story. This is supposed to be the living space. And this is dining kitchen toilet and on top you have the uh, sleeping space. In the middle there is no wall, this is only on bamboo. So the frame is bamboo because we wanted to get the high space and a lot of light through the difference of the roof because mud walls have small openings. So we wanted to have so We don't know what would have been if the British never came. And India slowly went into democracy. So how the people's houses could have been. So after Chetuna, we started thinking, let's try to imagine what elements would have developed. So we were look, instead of looking at the world architecture, we looked back at what was there before the British came or during the British, and took those elements which we thought is logical, like shedding walls, making openings, uh, brick walls, and put it into our first attempt at architecture. And you'll find this saying for, you've seen Saiful. Saiful will have, he was also part of Chaitanya. Uttam Bhai was part of Chaitanya. Uh, uh, Khogun Bhai Rajil Hassan, he was part of Chaitanya. So we were all working, at, almost working at the same time. So we were all well, at first trying to take elements which we thought might have been there. And then gradually, interestingly, each had developed their own adaptation to the modern technology. So mine was, say, Osborn. So same thing, same uh, issues, same problem solving going into a modern technology. And each developed his own way.